नमस्ते गुड मॉर्निंग माय रिस्पेक्टेड सीनियर कोलीग वाघमारे सर माय गुड फ्रेंड्स अन्ना मैम आई थिंक आई हैव फ्रेंड्स फ्रॉम नेदरलैंड नॉर्वे ऑफ कोर्स स्विट्जरलैंड गुड टू सी ऑल ऑल द फ्रेंड्स ऑल द गुड डिग्नेटरीज ऑल द ओल्ड फ्रेंड मिस्टर नारायण फ्रॉम लाइक हरियाणा का उधर फ्रेंड्स देर आर थ्री एस्पेक्ट्स विच वी शुड लुक एट ऑन अ मैक्रो व्यू What is like though we say by 2030, 40 percent of the portfolio is going to be from like renewable. Even now we say roughly close. To, even if you look at Maharashtra, we have around close to installed capacity of roughly around 44,000 megawatt. Out of that, solar, wind, and rest caters for around 11,000, and hydel caters for 3,000. Roughly 32, 30, 30 percent. Still, we have a tremendous potential of close to 10 percent to go with. Secondly. Again, the target is only 40 percent. Maybe like the case of Norway. Maybe basically Nordic countries are different because they are abundant with natural resources, bounty of natural resources. We as a like an uh, I would say a peninsular country, we have a limitations, wide range of like uh, I would say a meteorological parameters. Typically, we depend on monsoon. We don't have a rains, so we have a some limitation. But the potential of wind and solar. and even hither to unexpected unexplored offshore wind we are not looking at offshore wind as an option because that's a huge potential we should also look at but secondly when we are going with all in the thing as a power sector is a scenario if you look at there are three aspects all the existing thermal units if you if you look at both coal lignite and uh, of course gas close to around 60 to 65 percent of the installed capacity is from this fossil fuel And rest is from uh, roughly 78 percent from like hydel, and rest is from uh, solar, wind, and of course nuclear. Nuclear caters very hardly on 7,000 megawatt from the entire country. Operational efficiency and reduction of cost is the best thing one you should look at, because though renewable is going to be there, the other parallel energy sources are going to be remain there for at least for three or four decades to go. Maybe there are inventions can come like. gasification the better value bet, better energy efficiency shine like gasification green hydrogen maybe all that sectors will come but again the sector to mature it will take maybe decades so when that operational efficiency and increase decreasing the cost basically reducing the cost of generation is the foremost thing secondly the great flexibility to accept i would say the ups and downs of the renewable sources typically a solar and wind because wind has a maximum variations in that solar though it has a like typically a, i would say parabolic uh, i would say an output so the grid flexibility so that like whatever clean energy we are going to have in the future should be able to be we should be able to leverage in a better way so our grid connectivity should be there and we should go for more cleaner and cleaner technologies like solar wind maybe hybrid these three are the aspect which we as a power sector we should be looking at because since though i i be always say uh, the thermal is going to be there if we look at thermal uh, for example we take an example of uh, in a country like we we consume close to around 800 uh, million tons of like coal every year and every 10 million tons of coal generate close to roughly around 11 million tons of co2 so you just it's as good as like if you are burning 800 million of coal typically roughly is like in efficiency 100% or maybe whatever efficiency if the efficiency goes down the co2 is going to be more so it roughly are going to be like one to one so that is what the quantum of co2 we should be able to handle and secondly the as because we when we look at like clean energy sustainable we, we just we cannot look at only the green and i would say the green has effect co2 effect and other effect of course the water and soil is also the major thing so we end up with huge pile of uh, ash so all the coal has almost close to 35 to 38 percent of the ash so 100 million tons end up with like 35 almost 350 million tons of fly ash we should be handling so the value chain needs to be built because we are the almost one of the most uh consuming states for the cement because the another 6 to 7 years with like prime ministers uh, i would say dream the country is going to boom with lot of like industrial activity so the value chain needs to be captured in a clo blue where typically the flyers value chain towards cement and other related products 
other more value added products. Australia does a lot of work on that. Even if you look at, so those are the areas we should be looking at. And secondly, when we look at generation and the power, I would say the quantum of power available, available for the sale. If I say that country produces close to around 1500 billion units, so roughly 0.7, I, I would say factor of 0.7 multiply that, roughly 1000 to 1100 billion units are available for the sale. So that is another like 25 to 26 percent of that power available for the sale also goes to agriculture. So the state of Maharashtra has a very unique scheme which other states also can emulate, the Chief Minister Agricultural Feeder. Basically decentralizing the agricultural feeder which can cater to 25 percent of the total uh, power output. And secondly, the stress on the grid, both state grid and national grid also will come down. And again, you have a TND losses also can come down. So decentralized uh, generation and decentralized usually utilization for the agriculture sector is one of the major area where all the states also looking at. Basically, this has a two value. One, it, it will reduce the stress on the existing infra uh, and also additional investment also can be reduced. And secondly, quality of power and reliability and day power. Otherwise, when we supply electricity to the farmers, normally we supply during the night. So the convenience is also being taken care of. This is an only area where the power sector we should be looking at. And I am also going to be the par part of the panel discussion on the generation. I think I will dwell more on that. And thanks for the opportunities to the organization. Thank you. Jai Gun Jai Maharashtra.